Hello, this is Victor. I'm here with a new painting tutorial. And yeah, this month I will paint at the end the orcs. This is the winner of the. They are the winners of the. Uh, um, it's called the survey that I did, or the question of the of uh, from the. Uh, yeah, a studio update of this month. So the most voted between Facebook and uh, YouTube have been uh, the orcs. So I will paint this one in the tutorial because it's the thing that is the one that I think it's the easier to see the work and we have also the chainmail, we have everything so we can do all the details here and the color scheme that I will use is the one that have the um, red armor plates so it's not the yellow one, I think the, I guess there are a lot of the yellow one this is going to be the one, the red with the yellow flames or to, um, yeah type of flames. So I'm going to start first doing the base. We'll do the base for all of them at the same time. And I will start doing I will start applying first uh, Gorthor Brown. So I'm going to use like a little bit of not purely desertic but uh, earthy base and we are going to as, and as you can see as also I also uh, put some green stuff to cover some of the gaps. Uh, some of the yeah gaps between the front and back, and I think it's the only part, the only place where you need to put green stuff. The other ones are not uh, ideal to apply. Also, to show that I, I use uh, zenithal highlighting, so as you can see, uh, yeah, if you want to know how I did that, I just did a tutorial uh, uh, in in the wiki tutorial, so you can find it in my channel. And if you have difficulties to find. Don't don't hesitate uh, to contact me, and I will I will uh, share the video for you. So first, I'm I'm going to apply Gothor Brown on the base. We are going to cover completely the base. Uh, if you have schools, you can avoid to cover them, and I will not cover of course the shoes, but or the boots or the feet of the orcs. At the end, but I will cover uh, the base with that. Uh, I will avoid for example here we have a school. I will avoid to cover the school. But the rest I will I will cover. So I will do that. Paint the, the base with Gotham Brown and I back once this is done. Okay, next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the stones and I will do them quite like uh, light brown stones. Uh, and for use I, for that I will use uh, racker flesh. So we are going to pinpoint all the small stones with racker flesh. Uh, keeping in mind that my final objective is to do something like that, okay? So these are some that I, I have. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm painting. This is the one I use for the tutorial, but at the same time I'm painting other the other ones. So we are going to paint all the different stones with. Rakar flesh. Okay. There is no much, not much mystery in that. So we pinpoint all the stones. We go one by one. We'll do that, and I will show you once this is done. So. I have done the different stones and now I'm going to use a school, a screaming school to do the school. So I, went, I, I tried to do a much lighter color uh, with less brown than the lacquer flesh. You see that this is looking different and we are going to do this school that is here. As usual, we try to go thin with the paint and try not to clock any detail. If it's difficult, I will try to remove this guy from the base. Remember, I did not glue them, so it's made to make easier to do this with all the guy there. We can pin the guy later on. Because 
they want to do the shoes at the same time or the boots okay let's call it fit next I'm going to do the feet and I'm doing the feet with uh, what I'm doing with the color of I'm using for the armor and I'm using this time was darker red so it's like quite a bright red I really want to test that this is how it looks like once applied okay so here we have an example of but then we are going to wash it and make it to look much dirtier okay so what we are going to do is we are going to apply this now on all the different armor plates and this will, I will do at the same time this part of the shoes so all the armor plates as you can see I, I decide to go for the red color scheme at the end for the orcs it's called, oh, I don't remember the name, it's one of the uh, main water clans so it's the, I, I look the Iron Joe's um, Battle Tomb from AOS uh, because I wanted to look the different options and then I decided to go for this one that is the red with uh, some flames in yellow it's quite similar to the um, uh, cult, uh, cult speed or um, speed freaks of uh, in Warhammer 40k so it's quite similar it's called the I think it was the Devil Sons so I'm going to apply this and I, as you can see we just do a thin layer and I try to avoid the part that will go in black later on okay, this is one of the advantages of these miniatures is that it's not that easy to disassemble eh? once they are assembled but if it's needed especially from, from the base you can take them out so and I will do as well the different armor plates that we I want to keep in red. So what I'm one of the things I'm doing is I'm combining most of the armor plates are going to go in red, but I will do some in black. So you see I will do this in black, I do this in black, I will do some of them in black. I will do different armor plates in black on each of the orcs. So to make them to to give a little bit of personality to each one, keeping the red as the clan color but giving a little bit of personality by leaving by giving this black armor plates or dark gray I have to say dark gray armor plates so I will do that again we are going to to point different armor plates and here the knee protection I wanted to keep it in red because I want to do some of the iconography later on okay so you do that and I come back when I have paint all the armor plates of the orc so next step I'm going to use a scabbing blight ding that is the color I'm using for the deep grey for the dark grey and I'm using this because I want to do this part of the shoes or oh, I have to say of the feet you can also do it right if you want but I wanted to have a double color here okay and we are going to use this on other armor plates just to to avoid to be to have everything and uh, red okay to use some contrasting color so I'm doing this part here okay. I will do the same here on the feet and I will do the shoulder pad for example this shoulder pad I will do it in that color just to break the red a little bit okay and I try to be quite let's say random how I do that in the, and making each miniature a little bit different so keeping the same color pattern 
or palette we have to say but applying it in different places so I will do that and I will show you once this is done so here you have now I have also paint the dark grey on this parts and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a uh, Agvax Airshade wash on that part here so we are going to take Agvax Airshade no I, it's not on the usual here it is shake it very well okay always careful with this Agvax Airshade because if there is one color that you don't want to pour are the washes so we do a, a wash all over the base to make it look darker to show and I go all over the boots as you can see as well so the intention is to I don't put this metal I did not attach this metal yet because in the same time then I can keep working on the rest of the miniature so I will go over the boots feet, shoes, I don't know how to call this foot protection or feet protection so here you have uh, it's not bad that it's pulling in some places I think the, the, the ground is not uniform color so I will leave it dry and now we can work a little bit more on this guy here so let's close to avoid any risk of pulling this and you can see I painted red I have paint, now I will paint the green screen and I go for quite dark skin on this guy so I'm using Wach Flesh okay and we are going to paint the skin and why I'm doing no the skin is because it's I want to do also the face protection this guy have a very interesting face protection it's quite interesting school and uh, normally I like to go from deeper for the um, the most deepest part to the last to the uh, most exposed part. It's normally, uh, so I will apply that. Okay, uh, we are going to do this on the face, right? And we are going to apply this. On all the skin, for example, we all know, we also see that there is exposed skin on the arms. Okay. And in different parts of the orc. So I will do that, and I come back once this is done. So the green is applied now, and next step I'm going to use Storm Vermin Fur to do to do the, the clothes, or mainly the trousers. Uh, if you are wondering the noise, I start putting metal balls inside of the pots to help on the mixing. I have to thank my friend Lorenzo for giving me that. So So we are going to apply this mainly on the trousers. In the case of this guy, I also did the inside of the cape in gray. Uh, but you see here this is after applying the wash as well. So I'm going to work with greys or dark greys and red mainly for the uniform colors for the or uniform for the clothes and okay we are going to play the yellow at the latest stages so I do that and I'm doing this before assembling because in that way I can also apply it here in the between the legs although this is not going to be very visible just in case I like to do that 
and also because it's unassembled, I will be able to do the chain mail quite easily. So I, I apply that and I back once it's done. So next I'm going to use Rhinos Hide on some of the leather parts, except the weapon handles. So I will do all the different belts and armor the armor belts or I don't know how to call this. Okay. So I will do this. We'll do the ones at the back. So these ones we are going to do. And I like to do this before because you see we have here. This is one of the big advantages here on the Zenital priming. Is I can see the detail pretty easily. You know. If you prime this completely black, sometimes it's difficult to see on these small details what is the bell, what is the, the what's called this, the, oh, I forgot know the name. But you understand what is me the metal part and what is the leather part. So thanks to do that, I can I can really pinpoint the part that I want. So I will do the bells and I come back once it's done. So next step, I'm going to paint the handles of the weapons. In that case, we have this type of leather. So I'm going to use. XV88, a lighter color, to paint this part here, oh, it's too thick, okay, and as you can see, and up to now, I'm just applying base colors. So I will apply XV88 on both weapons and I will be back once it's done. So as you can see the handle are done with XV88 and now I'm going to apply iron breaker on all the parts that I want to look like metal or metallic. So this is going to be the chain mails. There's going to be this chain, this ornament on the front. So, and I'm doing this before assembly because I want to be able to reach here easily. Okay. So this is easier, and then I do that. I will not do the weapons. I will leave the weapons for later. And the reason is because I'm, <laughs> as you can see, I'm holding the meter by the weapons. So I will apply this metallic on all the metal parts except the weapons. Yeah, except the weapon blades. So it's on the blade of the sword and the blade of the axe. So I will leave these parts uh, unpainted just because I'm holding from there and I need a place to hold the middle. So I will do that and I'm back once it's done because I want to do the inside. So before putting him back to the base, the next thing I will do is I will apply Noon Oil just on the legs. Okay, I'm going to do that. As you can see I applied the metallic everywhere except on the weapons. Uh, this is done in purpose, and now I take bigger brush than that, and I will, from the bell down, I will apply noon oil. As you can see on the chain mail, this will give all the nice detail. I will keep this 
I would also this armor plate. I did not need the school, we can do this school later on. Here, yes, the objective is to prepare to do the shading here and be able to glue it back. I did not bother to close this gap here. Uh, I think it's not needed because it's not going to be visible. So, and as this, just as a remark, I did not glue these miniatures and I think they hold together quite nicely. So Here we are. The only thing I did remember, I put some green stuff on the top to minimize the, the view of the crevices. So here we are. We apply that. Okay, I avoid that it's falling too much. This is done. Okay. I'm gonna ensure that here I have a more even distribution of the thing. And I will put him back. To the base. And now I have the legs done. Right the inside so nothing will bother me and I kept keep, I will be able to keep painting so I wait that the wash is drying and I'll be back to continue working so now that the wash I did before is dry I will apply now uh, iron breaker on the weapons okay and I see that we have a leaf here something a decoration I'm thinking if I will do this in a different color I think no uh, let's see I will take a bigger brush for that we have enough space we are going to just with item breaker do the weapons and with that we are going to have all the base colors on this stage and we can start working on the washes uh, of course this school will go after the washes because I want I don't want to, to dirty so I don't want to take care now if I'm dirtying or not this school. So I will apply that on the axe and on this type of sword or big knife and I'm back once it's done. So now that I have the base call um, coat, sorry, on the full miniature. I'm going to do almost an overall wash with a uh, noon oil. So it's going to be a black wash. I will go through everything except the handles of the weapon. I will try to avoid, avoid that because I want to do the handles with iron air shade. But the skin and everything I will apply noon oil. On the flat areas will give this sensation of dirtiness, on the metallic will give the look of all metal. So we want to have this, this will darken everything uh, and this really, as you see now when we go to the weapons, and I want to go for, of course, the non-glossy one, here I went too far on the, on the handle, I don't want to give it problem, I went too fast. Okay, I will paint over the glyph. This is why I'm saying I'm not sure if the glyphs I will do later on on a view gold color. So here I went over the handle, but this can be easily removed. Okay, I will do the bottom of the weapon. And I have to say each miniature of this set have although they look pretty similar, they have their little personality as well. Okay, this guy have a very, have this uh, face protection. Okay, and have, then we have the other guy, the, the boss with the cape and the pelt. I will do a, a video about easy way to do the pelt, but this is going to be more on the weekly. So in that way I cover all the different parts, I think, because the only thing that this guy has not has is the pelt that the boss has. Okay. 
as you can see I'm just doing a wash of course we are not going to f uh, the, this Joe food action it's really interesting this guy I really like all this this looks quite almost a little bit like Mad Max is reminding me Okay, I will do all the miniature, the wash all over the miniature, and I will I come back once this is applied and dry. So this is how it looks like after doing the wash with no knowing. We need to still do a, a, maybe a little bit more here, the wash is to slip away. But no, I'm going to do a second wash with Aguat Erche, and this will help also to correct some of the, of the mistakes on the red. So I'm going to do this especially on the metallics and here that I, I have I have this miss this will solve a little bit the, this this means we can go quite f and then we are going to solve it later on when we clean up the washers I will go again on the armor to give more a uh, dirty look to the armor this will help to give this browny look you see so will give will help to give more a dirty look uh, a little bit rusted a dark rust, so this is normally all rust is more brown than orange and I will do the same on the weapons so I will apply this on all the metallics again so and, and remember that it's not a bad idea to do sometimes washes in layers as, as we do the paint job uh, as we do for other paint jobs and we are going to apply of course now on the handles of the weapons to give this uh, look more leathery uh, if you go a little bit on the green area don't don't worry it's not going to make a big difference as we really applied a very dark wash before but on the metallics will give this brown looking that will help to to give the weapons a more rust all metal look and i think it's matching very well with the i like this to do a lot when you do on that or when you do or Nargle or something like that. Although Nargle, okay, I like to go as well with more orange right, sorry, and rust. We will apply as well here on the front of this thing, on the chain. And again, if you go a little bit over the red, don't, no problems. It's not going to make a big difference, it's not going to be super noticeable. This way I'm using an uh, uh, old brush. Uh, I, I try to avoid the school, the school I will try to keep it cleaner um, and that's all so now I wait that this I will not do it on the face protection but well, we can do it anyway if we want on the face protection this will give more of to look and now I will wait that this dry before doing the next step but we are going to start doing some detail work and some highlights so I leave it there, I wait, I wait that this dries and then later on we are going to start to apply here a little bit to give it a bit more dirt effect. Uh, and we are going to, yeah, uh, I wait that this dries and I come back. So this is how it looks like now, okay, and now we are going to start doing some of the highlights. And I will start by using a corn red to clean up first a little bit the 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 washers but at the same time I will also do the flames so first let's do first I will do as you can see this is more advanced one here I will do this type of flames as well as a decoration so we are going to do Some on I will do here on the side of the yellow guy. Uh, sorry, on the on the red mm, shoulder pad. So we will spare something like that. And why I say that I do the same time that I'm doing the cornbread because then I will use the cornbread to clean up 
the, 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 so we are going to do the longer frame. You make like you can make to make it even more interesting, more flowing looking. We can do something like that. It's not really a flame what we do here, so it's more like the orkish type of glyph simulating flame. Okay, this is the, the intention. So this way is so schematic and so straight lines. want to have, I want to avoid rounded bars, so I want to be really have a straight lines. So we need to, I will need to clean. So this way I have the red. I'm thinking if I will do, I will not do on the job, so I don't think it's adding value. I'm thinking to do some on the black as well. These are going to be smaller. So let's do first the center one. can put some hesitating if to add more or not I think this should be enough let's clean up this one first so for example here I go with red and I will apply it here With the gold red, we are going to eliminate the excess of white that we can have in some places. We don't want to eliminate completely the white, of course, but for example, here 
I would like to clean. Because this will help. to make the damage more visible. Okay. So I will clean up as well the flames there. And for that I will use It has a cabin blight ding that was the base color. And if we have there the school, I think I will not. I'm not in favor, but I will add gray here just to this damage. Just fill in the wash what did it went there. Well, so we add. Just to be sure that I don't miss this part. So now I stop this and this and I focus on the red. I will have Reynolds height and the Reynolds height mainly is to correct what I have the feeling that white has not done the job for example here from this this rivet I want to play a little bit of Reynolds height. To make it more visible, we'll go and the way I just put it, we'll do it now with the Venus Sky. I think it's more the color we want. Okay, so now with corn red, as I say, try to clean up a little bit the washes, okay, and make the red. So now the objective is to in to make the red to look less messy. This is the objective. We don't want to look cleaner, clean. We want to look less messy. So we want to keep some of this dark. For example, here I will keep the, the dark shade from the wash. But here I will go with the red and go down. When I have the cuts, I will go with the red around the cut. Now to make 
then when we have a step of I will go like that then here on the front I don't want to eliminate completely the dark part but I want to make this cut to be shown enough This is the intention to, to make, for example, here I clean up the top, go through the edge, follow this type of jaw design, then I follow the one, and then I do this. Okay, the fingers. I will do the fingers one by one. Okay. But it's important to keep the wash between the fingers. This is a, a, a slowly, a slow step, okay? Like here, that it looks very dark. So I, here we have definitely too much wash. So go with the red bleeding a little bit okay and then I use Bruno's height and I use more than this okay Bruno's height is a great shade or a great uh, yeah I would say shade but do not use it as a shade not as the same concept of shade so it's a great a great uh, that color for red. Red when it's very dark it starts becoming brown. And here the transition is very harsh. I will use Linux height to help the transition blending a little bit with red. Okay. So I'm spending time because I think this is one of the important steps that a lot of time we try to overlook. I want to go for the dirty look, okay? But I want to look a clean paint job at the same time. So, oops, need to go to the go. So, simulating, for me, simulating dirtiness is not the same than making a dirty paint job. So you want to keep a clean paint job that is simulating a dirty armor. And this is what I try to do. You see, this is going to be more the end objective. The yellow is not done, have to be dirty. But this is where we go, okay? So this is just the first highlight. This one has two highlights already and yeah I will keep doing that for the over here okay. we keep the dirty spots so we don't limit them for example uh, let's do the shoulder pad and I will from there so the shoulder pad I use this part here and the roots I'm not painting them because I will do them later on with a lighter red so I really want the rivets to pop up okay and then I will do something like that and something like that and the darker part I go a little bit more with Reno's height and I make sure that they have a darker area there with the red coming in the middle. For example, here at the. And this is why I'm using Rhinos height. Here that the shade did not went perfectly. I just helped. The, the point is the real height will help me to 
at definition where the why she did not went as good as desired. Okay, the, for me the why is a, a good guidance to show me what I should highlight and what I should not highlight. Okay, so I keep doing that for the rest of the miniature to save time and I'm back once this is done. Okay, this is how it looks like after doing the, the cleaning with corn. You see the armor looking much, it's still looking dirt with very dark places but more tight. Now I'm going to use Evi, uh, Evil Sand Carlet. This is a little bit orangey. And we are going to do no edge highlighting, but not really in the traditional way. So, for example, what, some is going to be more in the traditional way here, for example. There is like a rip at the edge of the armor. I will try to follow this rip. Okay, but in other places, like here, where we see that the armor is already damaged, I'm going to do more but I will do this damage, okay? And you exaggerate this damage going further. Okay. And then I do a series of strokes perpendicular to the edge, as you can see, very short strokes. This will give a really broken and finishing to the Point. Let's repeat it here. So, other thing I will do is I will pinpoint the rivets with this color, okay? And I'm going to again here I will respect the hole we have there the, for the rivet missing, and then I go like that. When I arrive to the rivet, I start doing that. Then from here. I will do something similar. Okay, let's do the show. And well, let's do first. I want to do, show also how to do the cuts or the deep scratches on the armor. So what I will do is I will go with this red and do the under part of the cut. Okay, something like that. This will help to make it more visible. Okay. And then of course here we are going to do the same I did on, on the other part of the armor. And here we have so big damage. But I will just go around this all this damage. Okay. So the same on the jaws. Let's do it like that. I, I exaggerate the cut, and then fast and short strokes. We have, I think, here a rivet. Okay. Saturate doing the here on the top. We go in the opposite direction. Okay. And we do something like that. Okay. So and like that we are going to highlight all the red. So I will keep doing that on all the red and I show you how it looks like when it's done. So this is how it looks like now that they have done the this type of edge highlight on the full armor. You see I add here I have more contrast. I really like this contrast here but I really like to combine this the hard contrast with not so hard. So uh, 
I went for this extreme uh, highlighting, but I think I, I really like it. So here we have another one. So uh, I really enjoy to do that. And I'm really liking how they will look like there. I think they will look like quite striking on the battlefield. So um, I will finalize here this part of the tutorial to make it simple for me on the edition and also to make the videos a little bit shorter. Uh, and then I, I will work on the second part later on. So we will start working on the skin, the clothes, the grace, and, and try to finalize the, the military on the second part. So as you can see, uh, I think it's been a good progress. And yeah, and I hope you finding this interesting. And let me know what do you think. Leave the comments below. If you leave your opinion. If you don't like it, you have a like. Yeah,